<coughs> so good morning everyone in our last class we have discussed about this um, frequency sampling method it is basically the fourier transform method because in the fourier transform method we deal with uh, the what you call the frequency responses and all these things so here in also uh, what we are doing in the fourier transform in the frequency domain uh, we have sampled the signal and uh, then from there after the sampling we have calculated the hn values okay <laughs> so this method was basically frequency sampling method uh, without uh, using the window however with using the window it would be the same uh, procedure once you get this uh, hdn values okay so you will have to multiply with the wn values to get h dash n now this h dash n will be used for the realization of the filter now coming to the next type of uh, filter uh, which is basically a kaiser window now this kaiser window function it is being implemented uh, and it is quite uh, what you call it is not used commonly the reason being it is bit uh, cumbersome to design the filter however uh, the designing of win, uh, designing of the filter using the kaiser window it is one of the most accurate method for designing the fir filters okay why that is so this is because when we talk about uh, any frequency response of a filter what we know is that <clears throat> nothing is ideal in nature okay there will be some non idleness within the system now due to that non idleness uh, if you talk about the uh, low pass filter we have discussed that it is idle characteristic should be something like this okay <coughs> now is it the case always it is not the case always okay so when we try to design this thing so what we happens is that we have some ripples in the passband then there is a transition band and then there is some ripples in the stop band okay so this is what it has been shown over here so we have see pass band so 0 to omega 1 for the case of uh, low pass uh, low pass filters then we have a stop band which starts at um, omega 2 okay so there is a ripple those so these are stop band ripples so <clears throat> there is a band where it is neither in the pass band nor in the pa uh, stop band so what is happening it is moving from the pass band region to the stop band region so that uh, region it is called transition band okay and this transition band it is given by omega 2 minus of omega 1 okay omega 2 minus of omega 1 so this is the thing now in between this one you can see omega c so what is omega c omega c is nothing but omega 2 plus omega 1 divided by 2 okay so the average of the point where you have this omega 1 from where the transition band starts and where the stop band uh, uh, this uh, pass band stops and the stop uh, stop band it initiates or starts okay so the cutoff frequency we it is usually taken by this equation now how do you define this pass band ripples so the pass band ripples it is usually regarded as 1 plus <coughs> delta 1 and 1 minus delta 1 so <coughs> y1 we are considering that the amplitude over here the amplitude response it is a normalized amplitude response and its amplitude we are since it is a normalized amplitude response it is having a value of 1 okay <clears throat> on the contrary in the stop band uh, this thing uh, h2 cannot be so this value it is regarded as this one we are uh, which we are considering that is uh, actually the h1 okay and h2 it is regarded as the amplitude in the stop band 
so amplitude in the stop end cannot be zero as we all know so there would be some ripples so we will be having an average value okay and across this average value there will be some ripples now if you see over here <coughs> as we are uh, having 1 plus delta 1 and 1 minus delta 1 <coughs> and what is this one this one was nothing but the h1 similarly across this h2 we will be having h2 plus delta 2 and h2 minus delta 2 and this total width it would be 2 of delta 2 whereas uh, in the pass band the total width ripple width it would be 2 of delta 1 okay so this are the characteristics of a filter which we would be uh, requiring while designing any kind of filter using the teaser window function okay so <clears throat> let us take an example so design an fir filter <coughs> fir low pass filter satisfying the following specification where we are having alpha p which is uh, less than or equal to 0.1 uh, db and uh, alpha s which is uh, which is greater than or equal to 44 db then uh, what we have omega p it is uh, omega p we have already discussed the pass band uh, frequency uh, it is uh, 20 radians per second and then we have stop band frequency which is 30 radians per second then we have omega sf so this is sampling frequency okay so which is um, uh, which is basically uh, 100 radians per second okay so you need to see over here that if you see over here i have given the omega s which is for the stop band frequency hence i have to use uh, another notation over here you know, for the stop uh, for the uh, sampling frequency why otherwise both of them would have been omega s because conventionally we um, uh, represent sampling frequency as the omega s okay now what is this uh, alpha p alpha p is nothing but your pass band ripple and alpha s is your stop band ripple okay now what is the uh, transition width transition width b it would be given as omega s minus omega p which is equals to 10 radians per second so omega s minus omega p okay so we get 10 radians per second what is omega c omega c i already told you it is omega p plus omega s divided by 2 okay so find out the average it is 25 radians per second okay now if you see over here omega c it is given by uh, since it is a sampling uh, this thing we are uh, it is a digital signal composition we can represent as omega c uh, capital t which is the time period and it would be given by omega c multiplied by 2 pi by um, sampling frequency now we put the values so we get that the cutoff frequency it is in radians okay so it is in pi by 2 radians okay <clears throat> so we have found out the cutoff frequency of the filter now next what we need to define the amplitude response so we have defined the amplitude response over here okay so hdn it is equal to 1 by 2 pi integral of minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 it is was j omega and d omega and this is a known thing from our previous uh, lectures right <coughs> in the step 2 we have to calculate delta 1 and delta 2 delta 1 and delta 2 okay so what it is so delta 1 it is given by 10 to the power 0 0.05 uh, multiplied by 0 0.1 minus of 1 divided by uh, uh, 10 to the power 
जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव इंटू जीरो पॉइंट वन प्लस वन ओके विच इज इक्वल टू फाइव पॉइंट सेवन सिक्स इंटू ट्वेंटी टू माइनस थ्री ओके सो फ्रॉम वेर दिस जीरो पॉइंट वन इट केम दिस जीरो पॉइंट वन इज योर एल्फा पी ओके इन दिस इक्वेशन जीरो पॉइंट वन इज योर एल्फा पी which will be coming from your this uh, pass belt ripple path okay then delta 2 it is equal to 10 to the power minus of 0.05 multiplied by 44 what is the 44 so this is the alpha s value okay so 44 so we get 6.31 into 10 to the power minus 3 so once we have got or calculated both alpha 1 and alpha 2 then what we have to calculate delta we have to calculate delta what is delta delta is nothing but minimum of delta 1 and delta 2 minimum of delta 1 and delta 2 so minimum is here in delta 1 so we will be using the delta 1 okay now in the step 3 once we have calculated the delta we will uh, calculate alpha s uh, okay so this alpha s is equal to minus of uh, 20 log 10 delta so which is given by 44.797 uh, db so here in if it is if you see it is given as alpha s greater than equal to so it is not an actual number so here in we need to calculate the actual parameter so we got that alpha is actual alpha is it is 44.797 db after this one after we have calculated this alpha is we need to calculate the shape parameter alpha okay so this alpha it is equal to 0 for alpha is less than equal to 21 and then we have 0.5842 multiplied by alpha is minus 21 to the power 0.4 plus 0.7886 multiplied by alpha is minus 21 for alpha is values varying from 21 to 50 and for alpha is greater than 50 we would be having uh, 0.1102 multiplied by alpha is minus 8.7 so this formula you need to keep in mind so depending upon what is your alpha s you will be calculating the shape parameter alpha okay so here in where it should be it is in the no, the second uh, equation it will be used so using this second equation we will be calculating the shape parameter alpha and it would be given as 3.9524 okay now once you have calculated the shape parameter then we have to calculate the parameter d now this parameter d it is given by it is equal to 0.9222 for alpha is less than equal to 21 And alpha is minus seven point nine five divided by fourteen point three six for alpha is greater than twenty one. Okay, so in our case, alpha is is greater than twenty one. So we will calculate it as d equals to alpha is minus seven point nine five divided by fourteen point three six, which is equal to two point five six six. Okay, so we have calculated the d parameter. We have calculated the shape parameter alpha. Now we need to calculate the filter order or the length so length is given by length is greater than equal to omega sf d divided by b plus 1 so omega sf is 100 radian per second then uh, multiplied by d divided by 10 bandwidth we have calculated over here plus 1 so here in we have got 26.66 so length is greater than equal to 27 so we can take that okay suppose 
if it would have been same 25.66 since it is greater than equal to a i will be considering it as 27 okay length i will be considering as 27 why because in our previous classes uh, we have seen that if the length is odd then it is a type 1 filter and designing the type 1 filter it is quite easier okay and it has no other restrictions also so get uh, designing a filter with a length which is odd it will be easier for us so even if it is 25.66 uh, this thing i could have taken it as 26 but i would have preferred to take uh, 27 instead of the 26 value okay? because then i will be designing the type 1 filter and it is the designing of the type 1 filter is the uh, is uh, one of the easiest method or it is quite easier right now once you have done this we have to calculate the window sequence okay so <clears throat> the window sequence uh, we have w n is equal to i0 within bracket alpha under root of 1 minus 2n by capital n whole square divided by i0 alpha alpha we have already calculated okay n it should be less than equal to n by 2 if you are having the length is odd okay because then the add uh, this n would be even so we will be having that value uh, n by 2 so we can use this equation easily okay so what happens now so we will be uh, having n is equal to 26 divided by 2 13 so <clears throat> for zero value what you will be having you will be uh, uh, having this one as zero so this gets one i0 alpha by i0 alpha you get one now for the other cases what you will be getting you will be getting something i0 of x so what is x x would be some value say 1.110 or whatever now this i0 x it is nothing but a function of x and i0 why i0 it uh, because when you try to calculate the basel polynomial function there can be separate levels so there can be i0 i1 i2 what we have to do we have to take the value corresponding to the i0 okay corresponding to the i0 okay so for every value of x you will be getting a value of i0 x okay yeah if you see over here if beta is corresponding to the x then we will be having uh, basel function of uh, i0 beta so for zero it is 1 and likewise you will be getting a series of values and corresponding to the series of values you will be getting the basel function uh, uh, a solved basel function okay so in that way so if you see in the first case what we are having we are getting i0 of 3.9406 and similarly um, in the denominator we would have got i0 of uh, alpha value what is the alpha alpha is this one 3.9524 so if you solve this one you get uh, 10.8468 so after solving this we got the value of 0.9899 okay so in this way W1 it will be equal to W of minus one. W2 it will be equal to W of minus two. So in this way you can calculate the window. Okay. Now the problem over here is that both of them are in the uh, the window values. They are spanning both in the negative time domain and the positive time domain. So you can shift these values. So that means you can start with uh, W of minus thirteen. Uh, as 0 then 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 
12 13 then 14 15 16 like this you will be going on right now once you have gone this window parameters then whether you can uh, go for this uh, fourier uh, series uh, you can use this fourier series method with uh, without uh, with window or you can use the frequency uh, sampling method with window you can calculate the function parameters and then you can calculate this h dash n which would be equals to sorry h d n multiplied by w n which you have just calculated okay so you will be getting this and after getting this you will be getting or realizing the filter h z after calculating the transfer function okay एनी क्वेश्चन आप इसको देख लो प्लीज गो थ्रू दिस केयरफुली कहीं पे समझ में नहीं आ रहा है जस्ट लेट मी नो अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग विच आई फॉरगॉट टू मैंशन ओवर हियर इफ यू सीन हियर वी हैव सेड delta equals to minimum of delta 1 comma delta 2 okay here in we have got as delta 1 in some cases you may get uh, this delta equals to uh, yeah, delta s okay so if that is the case then for the calculation of this uh, alpha s you will be directly using delta s okay so this delta it would be replaced with delta s it is nothing but you uh, see you are having alpha okay so you have just in the step 3 you have just cal calculated <coughs> alpha s okay you just check the intervals whether alpha s is less than equal to 21 or not if it is less than equal to 21 then alpha s it would be equal to 0 if alpha s is in between 21 and uh, less than equal to 50 then you have to use this equation so which is nothing but 0.5842 multiplied by alpha s minus 21 uh, to the power 0.4 plus 0.07886 multiplied by alpha s minus 21 okay if your alpha s it is within this range since if you see our alpha s over here it falls within this range we use this equation and if it is if the alpha s is greater than 50 then you will be using this equation the third equation yeah, this, uh, uh, the, the intervals are given alpha s intervals are given so based upon what you get first one is less than equal to 21 second is and third is greater than 50 so depending upon what you get if the value is less than equal to 21 then your alpha is it, it would be uh, this alpha will be zero if it is uh, lying alpha your alpha is it is in between 21 and 50 then you will be using the second equation if it is greater than uh, 50 then you will be using the third equation three conditions are given so whatever the values you will be getting for the alpha is as per that value you will be uh, calculating the alpha value you have to choose basically select
हाँ डेफिनेटली हाँ दिस पैरामीटर दिस दिस यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर दिस टू पैरामीटर दिस एल्फा वैल्यू एंड डी वैल्यू सो यू आर गिवेन सम कंडीशन एंड वट एवर सेटिस्फाइज यूर कंडीशन अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट यू हैव टू यूज आईदर इन दिस केस इफ इट इज इफ यू एल्फा इज लेस देन इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी वन then you have to use this constant value otherwise if it is greater than 21 you have to use this value to calculate the d parameter ठीक है तो गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन सो टुडे वी विल बी हैविंग द लास्ट क्लास ऑन द एफ आई आर फिल्टर सो वी विल बी बेसिकली डिस्कसिंग अबाउट सम ऑफ द बेसिक टाइप्स ऑफ द फिल्टर्स व्हाट यू कैन डू ओवर हियर एंड ऑल दिस थिंग्स in fir filter um, among the various types of filter what you can design one of the filters uh, it is uh, the smoothing filter okay it is also known as the averaging filters the smoothing filters they are also regarded as the averaging filters and uh, so on and these filters they are usually uh, basic uh, usually this uh, low pass filters okay so low pass filters they are averaging filters low pass filters they are averaging filters okay or the smoothing filters whatever you say okay so what are the different activities these smoothing filters do <clears throat> the first important activity of the smoothing filters is they reduce the high frequency noises okay they reduce the high frequency noises which may come uh, due to um, uh, some environmental activities or you know, whatever okay then we can have uh, they can reduce the quantization noises they can reduce motion artifact and lastly as the name suggests smoothing they can smoothen the data okay where there are some variations and then there is another application which is called power line interference so what a power line interference if you see in india we have a 50 hertz power line mains line so any 2.0 what we uh, what we power they get the uh, power from the means okay so in many a cases it has been seen that <clears throat> the 50 hertz signal from the power line it enters into the signal component even though the uh, medical equipments and other equipments we uh, provide uh, proper shielding and all these things sometimes noise they, they can enter into the uh, output signal so in those cases what happens is that uh, you you need to remove the power line interference and for that purpose the noise filter it is used <clears throat> so you can regard the noise filter as one of the special cases of the smoothing filter and we will be seeing a bit later <clears throat> how a same filter can act both as high pass uh, both as the averaging filter or the low pass filter and the notch filter okay <clears throat> now <clears throat> as we all know uh, coming to the first point reduce high frequency noise <clears throat> so 
So in this case, uh, what happens is that suppose you are having this signal. This is P, Q, R, S, and T. Somewhere along this thing, you get a spike. Okay, something like this. So these are high pass, uh, the high frequency noise. It may be bipolar over here, what I have shown. Uh, seen, uh, shown. Bipolar means <clears throat> this noise is being present in both the positive half and the negative half, or it may be unipolar. Okay. Bipolar or unipolar. Unipolar means it may either be present in the positive half or the negative half. It may depend. Okay. <clears throat> so in these cases, if you see, uh, if you use a low pass filter, they will be able to remove the uh, this kind of noises from the signal. Okay. Remove means uh, what I want to say, reduce. Uh, not it cannot remove it completely, uh, but it can reduce its effect significantly. Okay. So uh, the next thing is the quant uh, reduce quantization noises. What are quantization noises? We have previously discussed that when we are going for the digitization of the signal first step is sampling and the second step is quantization after the sampling when you go for the quantization we have we know that we can fix some levels. Say these levels are 0, 1, and 2. Say for example. Okay. Now, in this case, suppose you have a value of 0 0.49, then that value would be regarded as 0. Whereas if you get a value of 0 0.5 volts, that value will be marked as 1. Okay. So, see, when we are going for this rounding off, even a difference of 0 0.01 volt, it may bring up so much difference in the values. Okay. So, this is basically incorporating the noise within the signal. Now this noise, it is called quantization noise. <clears throat> now it has been seen that the smoothing filter, they can help in the reduction of the quantization noises. Okay they can help in the reduction of the quantization noises. Now the next thing is the motion artifact. Okay, so what is a motion artifact? Say for example, there is a person who is admitted in a hospital and there are various electrodes say these are the electrode terminals or uh, sensors the number of sensors say one two three 
four and five. There are five number of um, sensors which have been placed over the body of the person. Okay. Now from here you are collecting the data, sensor data from the human patient. Now it may so happen that due to some reason this sensor moves. When the sensor moves, you will find that there is a spike, momentary spike, which has been incorporated within the signal or within the output signal. And that noise, it is called motion artifact. Okay. So, if you see, as I told you, the use of smoothing filters, they can help us in modulating or in uh, reducing the motion artifact within the sensor. So, say for example, again, uh, I am taking the example of the ECG signal. Okay, so this is the PQ, uh, PQ RST. <clears throat> motion artifact signals can also be similar to the bipolar noise and all these things, uh, whatever I have discussed. So, but this should be very uh, high, uh, high noise, high intensity noise. Okay, so it is also, if you see, it is also a kind of high frequency noise but it is having a very large amplitude okay so motion artifact may be usually identified due to its high amplitude as compared to the other high frequency noises which are coming into the uh, signal uh, due to some other reasons okay <clears throat> now lastly smoothing of the data okay now say for example i will take this example on the right hand side say for example i have the time index and then i have the number of the students who are entering into the class now if you look over here at zeroth instance two students enter the class at the n equals to 1 three students enter the class then at n equals to two five students there has been a significant increase in the number of the students then at instance three there is a significant reduction in the uh, what do you call a significant reduction in the uh, number of students entering the classroom then i have at n equals to four three students and n equals to uh, five uh, two students they are entering. So if you see the basal level is something like this, two, three, it is varying something like that. <clears throat> However, at the instance two and three, there is a sudden increase and sudden decrease in the amplitude values as compared to the basal value. So in this case, we can regard this component as the high frequency noise incorporated within the signal. Okay. Also, if you consider this as a data, it can be seen that you are having a normal distribution and then you are having some high values and low values. Okay, so <clears throat> these two values at n equals to two and three, they are inducing a value, <clears throat> inducing a value, or introducing a uh, introducing values which are resulting in the um, what do you call 
unevenness within the transition of the data with time okay so if you if you would like to plot it over that n and the amplitude which is basically the number of students entering the class you will find that there is some myriad variation and you are getting some baseline then suddenly it in, the data increases and suddenly it falls down and again you are getting a basal line now in this case what is happening is that if you see the data there is an unevenness in the data unevenness in the data okay now the smoothing filters they can help you out in overcoming this unevenness while you are acquiring the data okay say for example i said that this is the number of the students instead of the number of the students it may have been the voltage what voltage voltage of the biopotentials what you are acquiring now how it can help as i said the smoothing of the data it can also be regarded as the averaging okay <coughs> so we will be doing the averaging but the averaging filter over here it is called while you are acquiring the data it is called moving averaging filter okay so what it does as soon as you start your filter at the zeroth instance it gets zeros and in this case i will take three point averaging okay so at the current point my y would be 2 so this is the zeroth instance the current instance then the minus 1 instance is previous to this there was uh, there is no no output so it will be zero then previous to that again there will be nothing okay so zero so 2 plus 0 plus 0 it comes out to be 3 and you get 0.66 then in the next instance 3 i get the current instance is 3 the previous instance it is 2 and previous to that it is 0 so 5 by 3 it comes out to be 1.66 next add the second at n equals to 2 i get 5 plus 3 plus 2 5 from this instance 3 from the previous one and the 2 from the last to last instance okay so it comes out to be 3.33 okay now as you go on if you see you are getting a value of 3 3 2 now if you compare this results what is the output output over here is 3.33 and my input was 5 so it has drastically the averaging filter it has drastically reduced the output and it is trying to bring the output towards the basal level it is trying to bring the output towards the basal level okay <clears throat> on the contrary when we went for one if you see the value it has come out to be one which is almost the basal level which is the basal level basically okay and subsequently you get the other thing okay <clears throat> now there is a there is an issue over here and what is the issue if you look into the first two instances the values are far far below than the basal level okay so why this is happening this is happening because <clears throat> in the first two cases we had to use 
two values which were not present at all and we had to consider it as zero so the fir filter not only the fir filter we will also see even the ir filters <clears throat> what happens is that it takes some time to stabilize once the filter is stabilized then only it will give you a meaningful result okay so on from the third instance when the filter is having all the three values which has been acquired from the sensor if you see it is giving us the meaningful values and this is important okay so this is uh, one of the factors which uh, we sh uh, you should keep in mind while designing the filters that all the filters they need some time to stabilize okay and after the stabilization has taken place then you can consider the values for the analysis purposes or the recording purposes another important thing if you if you consider over here is that uh, you should keep in mind and it is one of the disadvantages of the averaging filter it is it has what it has done it has reduced the amplitude no doubt it has reduced the amplitude of the noises but it also reduces its height in many a cases this reduction in the amplitude it is say it is good for uh, reducing the high frequency noise no doubt but in many a cases uh, say for example in the ic signal also suppose there is an impulse noise over here like this if it is reducing the height of this noise component it would also be reducing the hei height of the signal components and this is one of the major disadvantages <clears throat> accordingly while you are trying to record the signals over here it is mandatory to calibrate to know the calibration of your signal so what is the initial 1 millivolt signal it would give you an amplitude value so you should know this also <clears throat> another important thing is that another disadvantages of the averaging filter is that it broadens this peak if there are any peaks it would broaden the nature of the peak okay one is not only it will reduce the height of the signal component and uh, uh, height of the noise components it would also reduce the height of the signal components and the same thing is it would broaden the peaks so that um, broadening it may lead to erroneous um, analysis of your signals okay now coming to the <clears throat> next year uh, some example yeah uh, sorry then uh, there is another year uh, power line interference i forgot uh, this one so in the power line interference what you would see is that suppose you are having this is the signal you will find that there is a constant overriding of the signal with some noise with some sinusoidal noise over the thing and when you do the fft you would get whatever the signal components are there you would get those and suddenly at 50 hertz 
you would get a peak. From there, you can say that this noise, uh, this signal is being corroded with the 50 hertz noise. Okay, so it would appear like this. So the smoothing filter, it is capable of uh, handling this kind of uh, thing. Um, and we can play with the sampling frequency to design this notch filter. Now let's see the examples. <clears throat> yeah, the previous one. Yeah, I forgot to explain this um, equation. In this equation, what we have done, yn, because it is a function of n, yn is equal to 1 by 3 xn, x of n minus 1, the previous instance, and plus x of n minus 2. So, this is a simplest moving averaging filter. And if you try to find out the transfer function of this filter, so you can find out yz equals to 1 by 3 xz plus xz into z inverse plus xz into z to the power minus 2. And from here you can find out xz is equal to 1 by 3 1 plus z inverse plus z to the power minus 2. So this is the transfer function of the simplest moving average gene filter. Okay. So smoothing filters. So average, three point average. We have just seen how to uh, design a moving averaging filter like this. And this is the Z transform equation of the three point averaging system. And this is the realization. Then coming to the Henning filter. In the Henning filter, you have see your widths are changing xn plus 2 of x of n minus 1 plus x of n minus 2 and you add up uh, with a coefficient of 1 by uh, if you see the coefficient of xn is 1 then the coefficient of x of n minus 1 is 2 and coefficient of x of n minus 2 it is again 1 so this is 4 so 1 by 4 in the previous case it was 3 so 1 by 3 was the multiplier in this case you have 1 by 4 as the multiplier. Okay. So you can say in any kind of averaging filter, you have an 1 by x, uh, say not x, you will get, we may get confused. So we may write it as, say, a as the multiplier in any of the averaging filter where a is equal to summation of coefficients of the filter okay summation of coefficients of the summation of the filters so if you see we can do like this we can get uh, hz equals to 1 by 4 1 plus 2 z inverse plus z to the power minus 2 and then we can realize the filter and this is the hmm, what you call uh, the pole zero plot over here there are two poles at the origin of the uh, filter okay and two zeros at pi uh, at uh, yeah at pi okay <clears throat> now if you want to find out the frequency response of this filter then i have already discussed then we will just replace it with it is power j omega z will be replaced with it is power j omega to find out uh, these things then convert them into uh, gauss and sine omegas and then you you will be able to find out this thing okay now what is the amplitude response and what is the phase response of the filter then next uh, uh, filter is least square polynomial smoothing filter and it is given by yn equals to 1 by 35 and these coefficients are there so it comes out to be something like this and if you want to find out uh, this thing 
so this capital A is nothing but n by 2 where n is the order of the filter so so if you see uh, if l is n by 2 then uh, when l is 2 our n should be 4 and the length it would be 5 so if you see we are having five coefficients okay similarly for l equals to 3 we have um, seven coefficients 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 coefficients okay <clears throat> and all this coefficient if you see they are symmetric across the center point okay so in this way you can calculate depending upon the what is the order of the filter uh, order of this uh, least square polynomial uh, smoothing filter you can find out the coefficients and uh, you have to memorize these um, numbers these tap weights tap weights these are nothing but the filter coefficients okay tap weights are nothing but filter coefficients okay then next is our notch filter if you see the equation of the notch filter and the averaging filter both are same okay however over here if you see we have mentioned the sampling frequency 180 samples per seconds so this is because if you see the positioning of the poles are zero so you need to manipulate the sampling frequency such that where we have the placement of the zero at that position we get the 60 hertz or the 50 hertz power length interference with this component in this case we have considered 60 hertz because this example was taken from the biomedical signal processing by tomkins uh, which considered the power line interference at the 60 hertz because in the western countries we have 60 hertz um, power line interference okay so um, in this case it is the 60 hertz but for india if you want to design you can change the sampling frequency accordingly and you can design the notch filter in the way <coughs> okay so uh, this is the transfer function and i hope uh, this modulus of h omega and phase of uh, h omega and if you can see it is having a a linear phase okay so all fir filters they are having linear phase uh, filters so then we have the implementation of the filter over here next coming to the derivative filters so what are derivative filters please remember this thing hd you all know hd so high pass filter is a derivative filter This way, high any high filter, they are derivative filters. Okay, so we can implement the derivative filter in various ways. The first one is the two point difference method, which is the simplest method, uh, just like in the previous one where we had the three point average. However, in the difference, what we find out, we find out delta x by delta y. Okay. So delta x is x in minus x of n minus 1, the current instance and the previous instance. And t, t is nothing but 1 by fs. So basically, what is this thing? This is delta t <clears throat> or the difference between the time unit or the difference between the two or uh, the what you call the gap between the uh, sample uh, xn and sample x of n minus 1 and since we keep that uh, since the fs is constant that is also constant and we keep it uh, like this so we have this uh, two point difference filter and its transfer function it is given by xz equals to 1 by t 1 minus z inverse and then you if you find out the pole zero plot the zero would be at one and as usual the pole would be at zero zero unit okay <clears throat> now if you see in this case 
there is no suppression. Uh, it allows the um, frequencies in the high frequency component and hence the high frequency noises are amplified because as I told you derivative filters they are high pass filters. So if there are any high frequency noises within the signals they will be amplified. Okay. Then we have three point central difference filter. So it is given by xn minus of x of n minus 2. So if you have xn, then we have x of n minus 1, then we have x of n minus 2. Okay. Now we are taking this xn and x of n minus 2, and hence, if you see this delta t, uh, which we have taken in the previous instance as t, it would be 2 of t. So because this is 1t and the x n minus 1 and x n minus 2, there would be another t. So if you add up, we would be having 2t and hence in the denominator we are having 2t. And the realization of the filters are to, uh, over here like this and at the origin we will be having two poles. Okay. Now, in this case, if you see, we have a zero at pi. Okay. Hence, this three point central difference filter, this would suppress the high frequency noise component. They will not be amplified, which was one of the important parameter or disadvantages, disadvantage of the two point difference derivative filter. Okay. So, in three point central difference filter, the high frequency noise components can be suppressed. Okay. Then we have the least square polynomial uh, filters, uh, uh, polynomial derivative approximation filters. So if you see, uh, we have the taps and all these things uh, similar to the previous one where we had designed this least square polynomial smoothing filter. We have the a similar kind of thing. So you have L, which is basically n by 2. Okay. So you have the lengths like this. Now, and one important thing over here is that if you see the central point over here, it is zero. Okay, the central point of this, uh, the central coefficient, not point, the central point or central tap weight of this filter is zero, and the coefficients on the left hand side and right hand side they are negative of each other. Okay, in the previous case, they were the same values. If you see, they are of the same values. Okay. 12, 12, minus 3, minus 3. Then across this 7, we had 6, 6, 3, 3, minus 2, minus 2. However, in this case, we have across 0, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2. So, it is basically, you can also regard it as this kind of filter as the gradient filters. one d gradient filters because there are two d gradient filters also which are used in the uh, medical image processing or the image processing altogether okay now if i ask you to design a second derivative filter how will you derive if you see in the central point difference filter uh, we had one minus of z to the power minus two okay now if you cascade it this filter then you can get this value 1 minus 2 z cube minus uh, 2 plus z cube minus uh, 4 okay so you will be getting a value something like uh, an equation something like this uh, that uh, not the equation the transfer functions um, the xz something like this and then you can implement this filter. So the implementation of this filter may be either in the cascade form. I hope by now all of you know how to implement the filter in the cascade form. 
I have told you first you need to implement the first one and then the output of the first one should be given to the uh, second filter or you can simplify this and you can design the filter using this uh, exact where the equation has been solved and you can get the second derivative filter. Okay. So how, basically how do we get the second derivative? Um, basically we do suppose we are having x Okay, a function of x, we first do the uh, dx by dy. Okay, then again, if we uh, do the derivative of this one, then we get the second derivative. The same thing is being done over here. We are derivating it for the first time. And once it is done, then we are again de derivatizing it uh, using it another uh, derivative. Okay. And accordingly, we are getting the second derivative. So with this, we complete the FIR chapter. If you guys have any questions, uh, we can discuss. Otherwise, we will disperse for today. Sir, what are 1D and 2D gradient filters, sir? 1D, these are 1D, one dimensional. So for n values equals to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you are get, getting this amplitude values. Let's say 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. So this is only in the one dimension. But in uh, images, you have two dimensions. You are having X and Y. And this coefficient changes both in X and Y. Those are 2D gradient filters. But here, the signal processing, uh, we only have the 1D gradient. Okay. Are the least square polynomial smoothing filters um, also 1D gradient filters, or is it just the uh, least square derivative? Um... They are gradient. Uh, see, there is a change in the gradient. Gradient means when you go from a positive to a negative uh, domain, or from a negative side to a positive side. Okay, so yes. they can also be regarded as 1D gradient filters because the tap fits over here. If you see, it is going from Positive to negative. Positive to negative. Positive to negative. Here also positive to negative. Okay. Yes. Sir, um, another question. Mm. Yeah. Are uh, reconstruction filters and um, smoothing filters same? Because the reconstruction filters are also um, used for smoothing out the digital filters, and they are also may, um, designed using uh, low pass filters, right, sir? Yeah. So there are certain um, uh, what do you call? Uh, you have certain uh, uh, is scale, is scaling is being done in the uh, this uh, anti aliasing filter or this uh, this uh, output uh, output filter okay so uh, there is certain uh, uh, criteria to use the uh, this low pass filter as the um, what do you call uh, quantization filters in the while you are digitizing the filters okay so I have not gone into that details because uh, that would have made the course much more lengthier. Right, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that is all, sir. Thank you. Okay. So as far as I, as I remember, there is a uh, there, ha there has to be some scaling and all this thing. Um, while you are using this uh, for 
while digi uh, while smoothing this um, digital outputs right the uh, reason being as i told you smoothing filters uh, they uh, reduce the height of the filters and they uh, there are some uh, some stuffs over there and also another important thing is that that the taps which are being used they are low taps just like 3 point or uh, 3 point averaging or 4 point averaging system otherwise if you use more the values of the taps or in other words if you use a larger uh, order filter fir filter the more will be the smoothing effect and more will be the reduction in the height and more will be the broadening of the um peaks okay so usually they are kept with a uh, low point at this uh, averaging filters so that it does not disturb the uh, characteristics of the signal set no, of the signal itself okay so this is one of the uh, uh, the disadvantages if you increase the tapping or increase the number of the points the more will be the effect but the more will be the broadening also so somewhere you have to trade off uh, with your activity anything else If you guys do not have any other question, then I will stop over here.